think the hubbub and the frustration that's out there is as much a reflection of the fact that they're giving Trump airtime as the a lack of confidence that CNN's going to do it well. And then the format, which is, you know, they keep saying well, he's going to answer questions from 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 citizens. You know, it's not about them engaging in journalism. It really is about just giving him sort of a platform. So it does feel like a laundering. CNN is planning to host a town hall featuring Donald Trump. And the panel over at MSNBC that you're hearing from is not happy about it. Now, Trump hasn't been on CNN. He hasn't done a town hall or debate on CNN for a very long time since the 2016 presidential election. Joy Reid hosted this panel that featured Angelo Caruso from Media Matters and Charlie Sykes from The Bulwark. They came on to basically criticize CNN for this, trash them for giving Trump a platform. And I'm really, really curious what you all think, what Trump, what what Jenk thinks about Trump going on CNN for this town hall. I disagree with much of what they're saying here. So why don't we hear a little more from the arguments being made, and then we'll discuss. Republicans, Democrats, insurrectionists, everybody's on the air. Your thoughts, Angelo. I mean, I get a little uncomfortable with the false coequivalences and false balance, if that's the position that they've taken, because it's kind of a reflection of the larger posture that CNN has had over the last year or so, which is to basically mollify all of their right wing critics, or at least to attempt to mollify them by based, by validating even the most bad faith attacks on the network from them, and then shift their focus to try to appeal to them to come back on the channel with all sorts of concessions or sort of gimmies. And I think, you know, yeah, of course he's the Republican front runner. There's some, there's newsworthiness around. It is absurd in some ways, but we have to cover it. I appreciate that. What I don't appreciate is the circumstances and the timing. It feels kind of odious, like an attempt to goose their ratings ahead of not just the moment that we're in, in terms of Fox sort of sliding, but these this big upfront event that's happening. So I think that's a part of it, and I find that a little unsettling. So Cenk, I'm curious what you think, because I think the argument that Drawing a false equivalency between someone like Donald Trump and whoever the you know Democratic front runner is at the moment, of course, it's it's Joe Biden. That is a valid point, right? Because I do think that there are pretty significant differences. This isn't a typical Republican running against a typical Democrat. Donald Trump tried to overturn the results of the 2020 election. That that point is made loud and clear, and that is about the only thing I agree with. But whether we want to believe it or not, whether we want to accept it or not, Trump, as it currently stands, is the front runner for the Republican Party. And pretending like he doesn't exist and going out of your way to suppress, try to suppress his message isn't gonna work. It's not gonna work. So I, I just think it's such a weak position to be like, don't give this guy who gets a ton of attention anyway a platform, really? Yeah. So three things to say at least, so uh, number one, Complaining that they're doing a town hall for the guy currently leading in the race. He's leading by 30 points in the Republican primary and seven points over Biden is absurd. Of course, the guy who's running for president, very likely to win the Republican nomination, and and at this point, likely to be president, of course, you have to interview him. Of course, you have to do appearances with him. What, you're gonna shut him out the whole time? That doesn't make any sense. So that's to me is super obvious, but so let me pause there on point one. Why are they even talking about this? Because that seems preposterous, right? Because mainstream media is used to shutting out voices they don't like. They do it to progressives all the time, but we don't have the power to fight back. So in 2015, as Bernie Sanders closed that 50 point lead on Hillary Clinton, one of the most remarkable political events of my lifetime, he was barely on cable news and not at all on primetime news, okay? They completely and utterly froze him out because they're like, well, we don't like your message. We're a corporate rule and you have an anti-corporate message. So we just won't put you on air, problem solved, okay? So that's their normal MO. That's why they're like so frustrated. They're like, do we have to let him on? We don't like him. Well, in the, in the good old days, we just slam the door shut on anybody who we don't like, and the public never even hears from them, and we win. Well, sad day for you. Those days don't exist anymore. And remember, we don't like Donald Trump. We're not saying like, oh, yay, I want to hear from Donald Trump. No, but we have to be fair to everyone, and you have to do your job as journalists, which gets to point number two. The real problem here, guys, is that there are no journalists on cable news. Because if they were real journalists, yeah, sure, interview them and rip them a new one, right? It, uh, here, Donald Trump, 
I offer you a town hall on the Young Turks. <laughs> come and see, okay? <laughs> come and find out. Now, he's not gonna come on here because we'd actually ask some tough questions. The reason why Trump is kind of excited about it, the reason why MSNBC is worried about it, is because they know CNN is gonna be soft. Everybody knows they're gonna be soft. And by the way, look at the format. The format is already super soft. It's a town hall of Republican voters, and they're letting them ask all the questions. So it's gonna be 90% friendly questions. That is not a format I would agree to here on the Young Turks. Right. Because we're not in the propaganda business. But CNN and MSNBC are in the propaganda business. They're just doing propaganda for corporate rule, whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, right? So that and so there is a problem with the format. And yes, the host is a person who used to work for Tucker Carlson. It's uncomfortable, so they nobody in in media talks about it. But Caitlin Collins worked for the Daily Caller. She's a conservative. And and so is she gonna ask like really tough questions of Trump? Maybe to prove her mettle on one or two instances. I'd ask 20 blistering questions. Just ask any guest we've ever had on. That's why we don't have that many guests, because we don't play patty cakes with the powerful. We actually hold them to account. Now, the final thing on this is the correct response to Trump having a town hall on CNN isn't take his town hall away. The correct response is, well, then they gotta make sure that Biden has one. In fact, Biden should lobby for two of those. I know, okay? but they know but, what Biden is like. And no, I think no, that's, I know I'm getting I, to that's that. the real issue here. Let's of, keep it real. Of course, the right? reason why they don't do that is because Joy Reid and every anchor on MSNBC and every Democrat in Washington knows that Joe Biden is ridiculously weak and they don't want him doing a town hall. Because he might forget what to say, he might wander off stage, there, and he doesn't have anything that he could say. Look, I delivered this for you. He can say, oh, I deliver for the semiconductor industry, <laughs> which is not popular at all, right? So they don't want Biden on air. Well, when you don't want Biden on air, that means you've got the wrong candidate. The answer to speech is not less speech, it's more speech. I just, yeah, no, I, I agree with you on that wholeheartedly. I feel that the mainstream Democratic Party and their corporate media propagandists are all in cahoots in suppressing progressive in you know, progressive challengers to Biden in the Democratic primary, right? I mean, the DNC doesn't even wanna have debates, so there's that. And then you you have this issue where it's like, no, 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 let's suppress Trump's messaging because what? You think Trump's messaging is so popular and so wonderful that he's difficult to beat? If you had a decent candidate who could basically provide a message and provide a political plan that is appealing to Americans, you wouldn't be concerned about Donald Trump. But they are because Donald Trump will, of course, engage in populist rhetoric. But will they call him out on his faux populism? Will, can they pivot to Biden and provide examples of Biden actually carrying out economic policies that have improved Americans lives? That's the issue. I think the heart of the debate here that isn't being spoken is the fact that they know that Biden's a weak candidate. Thanks for watching the Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.